pray for us. Hello and welcome to St. Ignatius Field. I'm here with uh, first time color uh, guy this year, Will Heron. Nice to see you yeah. broadcasting. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, so we're here facing the Loyola Ramblers, arguably our, our biggest rival besides yes. maybe the Fenwick Friars, but Loyola University, I mean Academy, they've, they've got a great football program. You know, at the beginning of the year they were ranked uh, 49th nationally yes. and first in state. Now they yeah. suffered a a big upset loss to Brother Rice earlier this year. They did. Yeah, uh, as a result of that loss, uh, Loyola moved down to fifth in the state, and I believe 138th in the nation. I yeah, believe. and last year, uh, last week they took care of business against uh, Fenwick. It was a weekend game. It was a Saturday game, and uh, they won 42 to nothing. It was something like that, and they, they, they beat them up pretty bad. And uh, this team, this rivalry, it's really great, and it's great in every sport. And the Wolfpack are one in three this year. Uh, they've suffered some hard losses, but the team itself seems to improve every week in some facet of their game. And we're just about to get uh, underway here, so we're going to step aside. Get ready for the game to start. So the Ramblers have a noticeably larger team than we have. Their sideline is absolutely packed. And they came out with their skilled players first, as you pointed out. And uh, and I thought that was the whole team. And then I also did. Here, here walk out 20 more players, and it's like, are, are you kidding me? Like, who are all these guys? And these 20 players, they are a very big team. They are noticeably big. Oh, yeah. Bigger. It's like a public school out here. You know, it, some of these public school teams – are have so many kids and you know they use their skilled players this team has so many kids to work with and uh somebody gets tired you throw in some new legs and some teams don't have that advantage but the ramblers obviously do yeah the ramblers will have a uh noticeably larger depth chart than we do than ignatius does but we'll see how that works out because ignatius does have a very a very good depth chart so we'll, we'll see how the teams manage tonight. We will see, and like I said, we've been improving every week. We put up 28 points last week, which is our season best, except for the game against Walter Payton. We put up 42. And uh, fresh 12 minutes put up on the clock, and it looks like we are going to kick it away to the Ramblers. We'll see what happens here. Cheerleaders, band, everybody pumped up for this game. Like I said, against the Ramblers, the Ramblers are just great. They're a great sports school. You know, they, they 
pr they take pride in their athletics, and it shows. You know, their their record in most sports is really, really good. And um, a team like this, it'll, they'll be tough to beat. And no matter if we win or lose, this rivalry is, is just fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And we are about to kick off right now, so. Here's the kick. The game. And it's an outside kick. And it does, it not, does not go, go the 10 yards needed for it to be an onside kick. As the whistle blows, the play is dead, and the Ramblers will have a fresh set of downs to work with. Now, I'm not exactly sure why Ignatius would start off with an onside kick. Well, I mean, you got the Loyola team. You kick it away to them. You've seen how their offense works. You might as well try and get some momentum going early against a team as good as Loyola. You know, because Loyola put 42 points up on the Friars, and the Friars have a good team. And, you know, you might as well try something to get everybody all ramped up. Didn't work, sadly, but uh, here we go. Quarterback for Loyola is number seven, DJ Melsheimer. Here's a snap, and he hands off to the back, who fights up the middle for about a gain of six, maybe seven on the play. It's a very solid run to start off the game. For oh, yeah. Game. Their running back is Dara Laja, who is a junior. 5'8", 165 pounds. The kid's got some meat on his bones. So second and five. Here's the pass out to the right. And he's got a man open. It's 82, and he's got the ball. Nice pass there, and they're inside the 10 already. That was 82. That's Owen Buscoglia. Buscoglia. I'm going to try my best with these names here. So they ran a little fade route out to the right side, and the cornerback, Nick Bradley, was caught off guard. And pass was right on the money, right in stride, and they've got things cooking early. The good field position because of the uh, failed attempt at an onside kick hurt a little bit. But now they're on the nine-yard line. And here's the snap. It's a pass over the middle, and 82 has it, and he's in. So a touchdown early for the Ramblers. And Owen Buscaglia, two receptions, and uh, they're off and running. It was a very quick drive by Loyola. It was a great way for them to start the game. I'm still not sure why Ignatius felt it necessary to kick the onside. Gave them great field position yeah. around the 50-yard line. But we are going to play tough. We're going to try to take every opportunity to get ahead against this Loyola Ramblers team. And the extra point is up, and it's good. So 7 to nothing Ramblers with 11-16. That's a fast offense they have there. Jeez. Forty-four seconds into the game, and they already have a score. So the Wolfpack offense will look to respond. As like I said, they put up 28 points last week, and that's uh, the season high except for the opener against uh, Walter Payton where they put up 42. But, um, I mean, the, the Loyola team is, this is our toughest competition of the year that we will have, so. Yes. Let's see what the Wolfpack can do. It looks like Weber and Sonin are back to receive. Both are juniors. So it'll be number 19 for the Ramblers to kick it away. That's Mike Kurzidlowski. The Ramblers have a nice fan section out today filling our visitors' stands pretty well. Probably the best fan uh, away fan section of the year. And here's the kick. It will be Sonin at the 10, trying to find some running room. He goes up the middle, and he's taken down at about the 15. Five-yard gain on the kickoff return. And we'll go to work. I think it's Coolidge. No, it's Danny. No, Danny Moore might be receiving, though. He might be a wide receiver today. He is. 
So senior Danny Moore, who has played quarterback in the past, is starting the game at wide receiver, and it'll be Ryan Coolidge starting, the junior. Here's the snap, and it's a shovel to Brendan McNally, and a loss of yards, loss of one on the play. So they run that triple option, and uh, he elects to pitch it to McNally. Nothing doing there, so second and 11. Coming There's up nothing for, the for Ryan Coolidge to do there. There was no hole opened up by the offensive line. He could have either kept the ball or pitched it off. But either way, that play wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, and I'm sure the Ramblers have heard about the triple option this year. Gone, and, and you know, they, they were ready for it, obviously. I'm sure both teams have watched a lot of tape this week. Oh, yeah. So second and 11. Here's a snap, and uh, Coolidge will keep it himself, and... A gain of nothing on the play. So tackled right at the line of scrimmage. You have to think that at third and long, Ignatius will have to pass the ball, but they've been known to throw in a few runs on third and long. Yeah. So we'll see what they do. We are primarily a running team, and we were surprised last year, I mean last week, at the amount of passing plays that we had. But I wouldn't be surprised if we ran here. I'd like to see a pass, but the passing game hasn't it's not our. It's not really our uh, our forte. Our our strong suit. But we'll see. Third and eleven. Here's the snap, and it is a handoff up the middle, and nothing doing again. That's so a quick three and out for the Ignatius offense. Yep. Sadly, but it is fourth down, and we will punt it away. Absolutely shocking that the Ramblers lost to Brother Rice this year. It was a huge upset. That would have been a fun game to watch. Brother Rice does have a very solid team this year. It's not completely out of the ordinary no, that yeah. they were able to compete, but it was a big upset. Yeah. And the flag is for some movement on the play. It'll be on the Wolfpack. Looks like a, a foul start on, is that the I Leo? believe, Frankie DeLeo, yeah. number nine. So that'll move us back five yards. Still punt it away. Looks like they're gonna get great field position again as they stopped us way back in our our territory. So Chris Creed is back. And here's a snap. And it was almost blocked. That was close. Nice punt there by Chris Creed. And it'll go out of bounds at the 45. So uh, barely avoiding trouble there as that punt could have easily been blocked. And uh, the Ramblers will get set on offense again. A lot of fans here today filling the filling the seats. And here's a snap. It is a quarterback keeper, and he's got some running room. There he goes. He is to the 23, 22 they're spotting it at. So it was a uh, fake the handoff to Daryl Laja, and he kept it himself. That's a DJ Melsheimer, and it looks like the kid can run. He can. Picked up a solid amount of yards, and... Mike Weber had to finish that play and make the tackle. So big gain on the play, and they've got a fresh set of downs. And it is a handoff up the left side, and there's Laja. He's got some running room, and he is – there's a flag on the play. But it's close to the first down. I don't think he's there. But it is somewhat close. The theme for today is USA day so much of the wolves den as our home fan section is called is decked out in their usa gear so it is a penalty against the wolf pack not sure exactly what for but it will be spotted and it'll be another first down so their first and goal again with 828 left in the first
the snap to Melsheimer, and he hands it off again, and nice stop there. Probably the, the best defensive play we've seen so far is that one right there. Nice little stop. They gave it to Laja. He tried to go up the left side, and good stop, good group tackle. Yeah, it was a great tackle. Ignatius is really looking at that read option that Loyola is running right now. And uh, this drive, they've uh, kept it in check. Second and goal on the five. Here's a snap, and it's another handoff to Laja. Laja is in there. So there's another touchdown for the Ramblers. As they take a quick 13 to nothing lead. And this is just business as usual for the Ramblers as they uh, their offense is rolling yet again. They can beat you a lot of ways. They can. There's movement again, and I think it'll be on the Wolfpack again. I could be wrong. I think you're right. I think they jumped a little okay. early. It is on the Wolfpack. So what we've seen today from the loyal offense is they can really run the ball and pass the ball. They can do it all. Good overall team. Which we expected that coming in. They're just they're a great program. And the extra point is up, and it was a good effort, especially by number 16 for the Wolfpack. That is Tim Plomman, the sophomore, made a diving attempt at blocking that, but nonetheless it is 14 to nothing. 7.41 left in the first. And I believe Sonnen and Weber will be back out again to receive the kick. What do you think the Wolfpack needs to do to uh, pick it up a little bit? I think they need to try something different other than the run. Uh, Loyola is really good at stopping our run offense, so I think we should uh, attempt to pass the ball down the field a few times, maybe go deep a couple times, see if we can open up some holes in the secondary and see if we can get something going early. Yeah, I agree with you because, I mean, although we lost last week, we did burn the, uh, Aurora Christian with our pass game. Our pass game was pretty good. So it is Weber and Sonnen to receive the kick. And it is away, and it'll be Sonnen again. He runs in on the ball at about the 15 and gets swallowed there by the Ramblers special teams unit right at the 20-yard line. So first and 10, got some work to do here. Coolidge, there. Weber in motion, and they hand it off again, and McNally is about a gain of two. So second and eight coming up for the Wolfpack. As uh, they do not go to the air, they go to the run, and not really working so far. It is not. Uh, Loyola's front four is doing an excellent job oh, of yeah. stopping our run. Our, our offensive line is very small. So it'll be tough to stop this talented Rambler D-line. And here's a snap. It's a pass. It's up in the air, and it's behind Frank DeLeo. Incomplete. So That's th what I want to see more of, more passing. They had him. They, they, DeLeo had a window. Coolidge just couldn't hit it as he was being pressured. That's a big boy there for the Ramblers at nose guard, I believe, number 91. That's Ben Leroy, 6'2", 240 pounds. That's a big guy. What Ignatius has to do right now is complete a few short passes so Coolidge can gain some confidence and then maybe start going yeah. deeper down the field, making some big plays against yeah. this Loyola defense. Another big guy, and there's a snap. It's out to the left, and Danny Moore cannot bring it in, goes through the hands. That was nice defense there. And it'll be fourth and eight. Looks like they'll bring the punting unit out again. 
And like I was saying, they had a big defensive end, number 50. That's Thomas Draher. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but he is 6'2", 225 pounds. So some big kids here for the Ramblers. Chris Creed back to punt it away again. Here's the snap and the punt. Another good punt from Creed. And it looked like he called a fair catch, but he's running with it anyways. Looked like he waved the hand. There's a flag on the play after the ball is down, but to me it looked like the play should have been stopped way back behind the 50 yard line. Could be wrong. But he gave a little way, did you see that? I did, yeah. So Can first and 10. Flag is on? Did you see what the flag was on? No, it was after the play was stopped. Looks like there's a timeout. No? It's on the Wolfpack. So penalties have killed us so far today. And Frank DeLeo going out to talk with the ref, see what's going on. And it is way down there. Maybe unsportsmanlike conduct, something like that. That's what, I mean, that's 15 yards. All three of Loyola's drives, they've started in Wolfpack territory. And we need to push them back a little bit. They're jamming it down our throats. Mel Scheimer. Back to receive the snap. And he will look to the air. Nice pressure there. And they still make the play. Is he in bounds? No. He made the catch, but he is out of bounds. Still a nice pass as he was being rushed there. Did you see who rushed him? I did not. But he was shaking up a little bit. That was Good a big get hit. To the, get to the quarterback early. Let him know that you're there. But that's a sign of a good quarterback. His pressure is coming. He's still able to get a nice pass off. Didn't work out as he caught it out of bounds. So it'll be second and 10 at the 20. I believe it was Nick Gargano. And he has had a great year at the end. Here it's out to the right side. It's 82 again. And he makes the play. Is it in there, though? Might be at the 1. It's a touchdown. touchdown. Buscaglia, second touchdown of the game, and uh, they're burning that cornerback. I think there's been two different cornerbacks that have tried to contain him, and it hasn't worked. So it is 20 to nothing, 6:24 left in the first, and just uh, got in bounds there, and they're making it look easy. There's a snap, and it's up, and it's good. So 21 nothing Ramblers. We're not even halfway through the first. I haven't seen very much resistance with the Wolfpack defense. No. You know, I, last year for the Rambler Wolfpack basketball game, they seemed to be a lot more hyped than this football game, maybe because the Ramblers have, you know, such a noted good football program. But I, I feel like there would have been more hype this week about this game in school and I didn't really hear a lot about it but I don't know now according to my dad sitting next to me we had a Dick Butkus sighting in the crowd Hall of Fame Bear linebacker Chicago man himself number 51 some people consider him the greatest bear of all time and uh, I don't know what brings him out to 1076 West Roosevelt Road, but uh, great to have him in the stands. If we can during halftime, we'll try <laughs> to get an interview, but it's I a can't long promise shot. anything. It's a long shot. Stay tuned, though. Maybe we should just promise like a celebrity interview at halftime every week so that they just stay keep watching. There's three people back to receive this one. It's still Sonin, though, for his third kickoff return. And this one, oh, he shakes it off, though. And th that Rambler team just, they hit hard. And Sonin took an initial big hit. 
shook it off, and he's taken down it at the 19. He seems okay after that big hit. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's just a little, uh, gets you a little dizzy, you know. Loosens the pads a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Wakes you up. But we, every time we've had the ball, we've had a long way to go. The Ramblers have had a short way to go. Yeah, that needs to change. So first and 10. See if they go to the air. As it seemed to, you know, make it a little more interesting. It is a handoff and nothing doing. Maybe a yard. If Ignatius is going to continue to run, uh, I feel I feel that they should try to run around uh, the front four instead of uh, running it up the middle. All I the agree time. with Maybe you. Maybe see a few pitches few outside handoffs that's what and it I seems feel like that could work it seems like Ignatius has never been a big fan of the pitch and I agree with you jamming it up the middle is not gonna work on these guys we'll see what they do here and there seemed to be a little bit of movement but no flag here's the pass over the middle it's intercepted and he is up the left side number 32 for the Ramblers is taken down at the nine yard line Ryan Zincula, number 32, with the interception. The senior out of St. Norbert School. And the pressure came from the man I talked about earlier, Ben Leroy, the 240-pound lineman. He was coming in hard, and Coolidge threw it right to the Rambler, and they're on the nine-yard line, and they got a short way to go again as Lava takes the handoff. No, that is not Lava. He's still, he's right in there. They're signaling that it's down at the two. The ball no. is down at the one, it's second down. Down at the one, second down, excuse me. That was not Lava though in the backfield. That's 28 for the Ramblers. That's John Saliba. And it's a handoff up the middle and another touchdown. So it's a beat down here in the first quarter. No other way to say it. Just this have is not how Ignatius wanted to start out the game. Uh, last year against Loyola, Ignatius' defense held the team to zero points in the first half. Uh, we're not seeing that start no. from Ignatius tonight. Obviously not, and they just it just seems like they've got no. Uh, they, they. It seems like the Ramblers score the first, the first touchdown, and there's the extra point. It's up, and it's oddly, oddly spun, but it's it's in there, 28 nothing. And it seems like they score. The Ramblers score their first touchdown, and it seems to deflate our defense, and they're not playing with any heart. It seems like I, I, I don't know any other way to put it. Yeah, I agree. Someone needs to make a play, get Ignatius back in this game. Somebody needs to make a play, or somebody needs to give one great pep talk get them riled up again because I've played in games myself where a team is just starting to beat up on you and you just it just completely deflates you and you can't let that happen so we will get the ball back again Four forty-eight left in the first. As there's the whistle, and the kick will go to Sonin yet again, and he is taken down. He fights for a few extra yards, and he's at the twenty-four, twenty-five actually. And like, like McNally, it seems like Sonnen on those kickoff returns just wants to take it up the middle, you know? Maybe try the sidelines every once in a while. All Ignatius needs to do is make a couple short passes. Just get a first down. That's all we have to do right now, worry about getting a first down. And the screen pass worked last week, and we haven't seen it yet today. It's another handoff, and the same result. Nothing doing.
McNally uh, taken down, and it's a gain of one. Second and nine for Ignatius. Coolidge will go to work again. Who's number two for the Wolfpack? Sal Curran. Sal Curran, so the senior on the left side. Here's the pass over the middle. Bounces off to Leo's right arm, and it's incomplete. That was a bullet fired over the middle. Maybe a little too hot for DeLeo to handle. Looked like it was deflected by a middle linebacker. You think I'm so? not exactly sure. So it's third and nine after that incomplete pass. See, why, aren't they holding hands in the huddle? Why are they holding hands in the huddle? Do you see that? The whole team does that. I, I don't understand that. They're a team. Whatever. Sign of a team. I, I'm not sure, but you that's do what just you want to do. do. Third and nine. Here's the snap and another pass out to the right side. and should have been picked off, but wasn't. Goes right through the hands of number 48 for the Ramblers. That is Jack Ho. Hoff, Ho. What do you think that is? There? You know how to pronounce that one there? Uh, I think Hoff. Hoff, Jack Hoff. like Hoff. Fourth and nine, and Creed is back to punt it yet again. He's had a busy game today. Yeah. And here's a snap, and Creed almost blocked again, and Creed gets off another good one. Takes a Wolfpack bounce, and finally, they are behind the 50-yard line. Spotted at the 45, the 40. So, Teddy, what do you think the Ignatius defense needs to do differently this drive? Honestly, I, I have no clue. I, they've been beating us every way. Pass, run, I guess, limit the damage, I guess, is the best way to put it. Because they've been burning us with big time plays. I guess play safer than you you know, don't don't play aggressive. Play safe. And limit the big plays. I and think what we need to oh. There's a the handoff and there you go. Nice nice play there. Yards. I think what we need to do is we need to put more pressure on the quarterback. He's having way too much time in the pocket. And he's making big plays from it. We're we're yeah. we're suffering from this. We, yeah. We have to get in his face more, show him we're here, and we mean business. And that's uh, that should be Gargano's job, as we've seen once today. So no backs in the backfield. He'll go for the pass. And over the middle, and it's Biscaglia again. And it looked like some Wolfpack defensive backs were just kind of standing around. And it's a first and ten. So I think the D-backs just need to read the play a little better because it's not like it was like a – a trickery route, you know. No, it was Bus not. Skagley just made a little slant, and D backs just—I think they just watched the play unfold. In, in fact, he faked the ball to the receiver. He ended up, ended up passing the ball to. Yeah. He should have been there in the first place. So here's the snap and the pass deep. That's to the left side, and it is—is is that caught? They're saying it's picked off. There's the play. Is that Nick Bradley? It is. It is Nick Bradley. So there's the play we need. Look at the Ignatius bench right now. Look at how pumped everyone is now. This is exactly what we needed to get back in this game. So it was a deep play to the left side. It was not a bad pass by any means. It was, it was not, just no. better defense. In fact, it was in the receiver's hands, and it was pulled out by Nick Bradley. That was just a great, great play. Great play. So Nick Bradley is used to playing the offensive side of the ball for the first three years of his football career as his speed is just top notch. But he plays the defensive side and makes a big play. We're deep in our own territory though. And Coolidge has the ball, he'll keep it himself. And nothing really doing. No gain on the play. So second and 10. He 
Ignatius hasn't learned yet that running up the middle isn't working for no. them. They still continue to try and push the ball up the middle. I like that screenplay to Mike Weber last week. Yet it's another run and a gain of two. Two, maybe three. So Coolidge keeps it again. It's two in a row, and it is third and five. So not a bad game there. Let's see what they do here on third and five. Coolidge runs back into the huddle, and the huddle disperses. Sewing it out to the right. Curran and Dan McMahon out to the left. And there's a screen, and it's to Weber, like I said, but. There's no one there to block No, him. there were no blockers. No one. Seemed like uh, Sal Curran just bolted. I guess he has to, you know, run the route anyways, but nobody there to block for Weber, and he is taken down for no gain. Yeah, he, he tried to take that cornerback with him, but he didn't fall for that play. No. And it was an easy open field tackle for the Loyola defense. Yeah. And Chris Creed for his fifth punt of the game, I believe, if I've counted correctly. And Creed is kick gets away, and these are just getting closer and closer to being blocked. And who is that? That's Aiden Walsh. For the Ramblers, and they are at the 44 yard line. Like you, I'm not sure what the Ignatius defense can do to hold off the Loyola offense. I mean, we had a great interception. Could have turned the tide right there, but we weren't able to no. advance on that drive. So here's the handoff, and it is Lava. And he cuts. He cuts, and he's, he's out in the open, up the left sideline, and he's down to the three. That's Laja, and he was swallowed up. I looked down at my roster, and I thought the play was dead, and you yeah, he uh, he cut to the left, found some more blocks. Uh, what he saw in front of him, Ignatius was uh, stacked in the middle, and he took a few blocks on the left side of the field and advanced the ball. Another big play for the Ramblers, and they hand it off to Laja. He looks like he stopped short. Around the one-yard line, I think. Yeah. Big plays from Buscaglia. And that's the end of the first quarter. So 28 nothing and threatening again are the Ramblers. So if they go up 35, you'd have to think that they'd put in their backup sometime soon for yeah. the Ramblers. I think it's running clock if they go up a certain amount, but I don't think they're there yet. So 28 to nothing. So last year's game took place at Loyola, and we were tied nothing nothing after one. And I think maybe it, the damage wasn't too bad at the at the half, and then they blew us out in the second half. But this game is a much different story, and uh, let's see what we can do with three quarters left to play. It was also a different atmosphere at that game. Loyola plays Saturday mornings, and Ignatius, you know, for the first time in its career, is playing a Friday night, you know, Friday night home games. Yeah. Now. It's a very, it's a, it's a very cool atmosphere here. But oh yeah. The uh, Ignatius team isn't able to build off of that atmosphere yeah. for this game. Like we've said several times, new field, new track, new lights, new stands, new everything. New coaching staff as well. New coaching staff. New coach, head coach, kept some of the old, the assistant coaches. Sorry if some fans are blocking your view, but it looks like they are in there for a touchdown. So 34 to nothing. 
the Ramblers go up. And first play of the second quarter goes the Ramblers' way. And they'll line up for the extra point again. And it's up. And it's a laser, but it is through. No, they're saying no good. No good on the extra point as it went wide to left. I thought it went through, but I, I guess it didn't. It it's hard to tell from this angle. Yeah, so it, it was, you know, usually he has those higher kicks. That was a bit of a laser beam, but it is 34 to nothing. And the Wolfpack will get the ball back. And here comes the Wolfpack offense again. They put the three-man return again with McMahon, Weber, and Sonnen, a sophomore and two juniors. Getting ready to kick it again. There's the whistle. And the kick. Will go to Weber this time. He takes it, and he will get knocked down. It's hard to see from our angle where the where they're getting knocked down at. I believe it's around the 15-yard line. Thank you, right? Maybe the 20. First time Weber has received a kick today. They're at the 20. What are, where are they at? They're at the 21. First and 10. Here's the snap. It is another, I think it's keeper by Coolidge. Chose to run it outside that time. Still couldn't find any room. It seems like they're running timid too. You know, you got to keep the legs moving. It looks like when they see a defender coming at them, they stop break down all operations and yeah, let, let them hit them. The Ignatius offense hasn't had a lot of time tonight, so no. we got to keep warm, keep loose. Second and nine after the gain of one. And here's the snap. And there's a fumble. It's loose and picked up by number 50 of the Ramblers, and he's in easily. So another touchdown for Loyola. Number 50, Thomas Dreer. That's the big D lineman I was talking about earlier. Forty to nothing is the score now. You think they'd go for two? I guess I I don't. I, they're not going to, but you know, yeah, just to I make it. I don't it think in. they have to. Yeah, there's no point. But I mean, just to even it out, but. So let's see if he can redeem himself after the missed extra point last time. And there it is, it's up. And this time it is good. So 41 to nothing with 11.04 left in the first half. Nothing is working for no. the Wolfpack today. They will kick it away again, so they have intercepted the ball. They forced a fumble. They've scored with the run, the pass, and uh, I guess we're just waiting for that special team for that kickoff return. 
or punt return. I don't think the Ignatius offense is uh, past 40 yards of offense tonight. It has not been fun to watch. I'd like to thank all our viewers on High School Cube. We'll be on High School Cube all year long with various sports. So thanks for tuning in. And here's the kick. It will go to Weber again, two in a row. And he will take it to the 20, 21 maybe. So about the same return as his last one. And first to 10. They have not gotten a first down today. I don't think they haven't have that. They have not, no. And Chris Creed has gotten a lot of action. At this point, Ignatius just has to take it one step at a time. They just have to make a couple passes. Yep. If they're going to run the ball, they have to gain more than three yards on a play. They have to do something. So as yep. I s you know, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say they have to find a hole in the Loyola defense or else they won't, they won't get anywhere tonight. No. As I said earlier, the backups would come in at a certain point. They've got another quarterback, number 12, Aiden Walsh, warming up. See if he comes in. But it is second and eight after the gain of two. Here's the snap, and Coolidge will keep it himself. Looks like he got tackled for a loss. Loss of one or two. So we played Walter Payton, and we beat them pretty handily at Toyota Park. Then we play Tinley Park, and we lose. And then we lost a heartbreaker to St. Lawrence. That was the home opener. Horrible weather, but... You know, that's a game that we should have won. We lost 16-14. to 14. They scored with like 30 seconds left. And that's, that's a heartbreaker. And this whole season just has not been the way we planned. It's a lot of high expectations going into this season yeah. with the new coaching staff. Here's the pass. Looking to pass at least. And he gets sees off to the left side. And he ran out of bounds at the, at the 19 maybe? 19-20. Yeah. So a loss of one on the play. It'll be fourth and 11. As we see. And uh, we will see Mr. Creed out again. Number 10 for the Ramblers back to receive. That's Danny Gaugan. The only positive I can see right now for the Ignatius team is their special teams is getting a lot of work tonight. Yeah. There's not his best punt so far, and Gaugan will take it. Almost wrapped up and tackled, but he will run it. It's like the tackle was made around the 42-yard line. Yeah. They're... Looks like there might have been a horse collar on the wolf pack, but they there's no flag. And they are on the 43. And Aiden Walsh comes into the game. So the back of quarterback replaces DJ Melsheimer, who did a great job. And Walsh will take over. Got a new running back as well. That's Mark Miner. And they hand him off the ball. Yeah. Gain of four, three or four. Tackle there by Lewis Burek. So Lewis, Frankie DeLeo, and Max Bonholtz are the three senior defensive leaders on the squad. So Walsh will receive the snap and hand it off to Miner again, who will take it up the left side. 
And is he's close. I think it'll be third down. Looks like holding. Who do you think it's on? The Ramblers? Holding on the offense. That'll take him back. So it will still be second down. Second and 16. After the 10 yard penalty. And let's see what Walsh can do. Two plays from the backups have been hands handoffs to Mark Miner. And here's the snap. And it'll will also keep it himself. Shakes a tackler and is taken down. Not a bad gain on the play. Not at all. Broke a couple tackles. Gained about maybe five on the play. Yeah, five or six. And looks like brought it back to where they started. It's third and ten now. So hopefully this will be the the second defensive stop of the game as we made that interception earlier. <laughs> Walsh, and it's fumbled. The Ramblers fall on it, but it will be fourth down. So there's the turnover. <laughs> As for the first time tonight, the Rambler punting team will make their way onto the field. Number 84 for the Ramblers, Jack Herman, out of St. Clements, back to punt. And he gets it away. And it'll go out of bounds at about the 20. 22. Time coming to about four minutes left in the half. Hopefully we can get something going in this drive. Just get some points on the board. I mean, that's the most important thing. Start with some baby steps, maybe even a first down. And there's, is that a, that's Looks a fumble. Like fumbled. It, it's and Rambler it's ball. ball. Jesus. So Rambler ball. So this that comes out the Loyola Ramblers offense. So Once this again. game just uh, really not going our way. And Walsh will take over again. On the 20. Here's a snap. And there's a handoff. And that is a gain of 20 and a touchdown. That's Danny Goggin. Looked like no one wanted to make that tackle. He ran straight right up through the middle. Like we've seen all day, and it's 47 nothing. Ramblers. The Ignatius cheerleaders are trying their best to keep the crowd in the game, but it is not working. It's a bit of a futile they effort. Always shut down this crowd. The extra point, it's a bad snap, but a nice play there by the placeholder. And the extra kick is up and it's good and it's 48 to nothing. Ramblers. It is a nice night for football though. And uh, you know, 
last week was a nice night for football. That game against Lawrence was just brutal. And uh, Friday Night Lights are always fun, you know, view of the skyline. It's a great field, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a good atmosphere. Of, it's a lot of fun. Like I've stated before, I the atmosphere is amazing. It's very, it's very serene. What's my word again? Oh, peevish. The Ignatius coaches have got to be in a bit of a peevish attitude as the team just really has not come out with fire, you know? Uh, yeah, I agree. There's nothing much more to, to add to that. We are just, we're not helping ourselves tonight. There's Mike Weber returning the ball and and the ball's loose again. And it, the Ramblers have recovered. And then five again. So Weber coughs it up. And the clock is still running, so they're gonna have to get a playoff quickly. And I don't think they will attempt to make a play. No, the team is going to the sideline right now. Yeah, that'll, they'll just let the clock run out. So it looks like the half will finish on a special teams fumble by the Wolfpack. So it's 48 to nothing Ramblers and not a whole lot of positives, uh, if any positives to say about that. We had one interception, that was a nice play and that's that's the only good play we've had this this game. And we will get the ball to start the second half. But uh, I don't know what to say. Not a, not a whole lot of positives here. No, they're not. I I Ignatius, they're not changing up their, their offense. They're not doing anything to try to make a play. What's up? Oh, all right. Today at St. Ignatius, we are who we are because of your generous support. There are many ways to give back, such as the Tuition Assistance Program, which allows us to continue our tradition of accepting qualified students regardless of their family's ability to pay the full cost of tuition. Contributing to the annual fund allows you to support our annual operating costs. This is the fund that keeps us going. Endowments are often started by alumni in the form of class gifts or by friends and families as memorials or tributes. These endowments help fund over half of the $2.5 million in tuition assistance offered each year, support school programs, professional development, and ongoing maintenance. Planned giving through the Father Arnold Damon Society celebrates the traditions of St. Ignatius College Prep and its legacy to the future. K-12 
Capital gifts are available for donors wishing to leave their legacy on a particular building or feature of the school, while commemorative gifts allow friends and family to make a gift in someone else's honor or memory. Finally, the Parent Pledge Program provides over $2 million annually to help bridge the gap between the current expense of educating each student and the cost of tuition. All of us at St. Ignatius are grateful for your continued support. On behalf of the entire school community, I give you my sincerest thank you and assurance of prayers. May God bless you and your families. We are St. Ignatius. We are a family. We are committed to justice and service. We are Jesuit education. And we are open to growth. We are religious. We are the Mighty Mighty Wolf Pack. We are men and women for others. We are diverse. And we are tomorrow's future.
So here come the Wolfpack back on the field as we're back to start the second half. So whenever the team's up 40 in high school football, they will have a running clock. So this game will be very short in the second half. No, even if we come back, the clock will still run. Yeah, it's basically like slaughter roll in baseball. Yeah. What we're going to see right now. And uh, as time is ticking down, hopefully they had a good pep talk, and we'll try and put some points up on the board in the second half. That's all we can ask for. Yeah, you just got to take it one step at a time, baby steps. Slowly work your way down the field, gain some confidence. But we have not had a first down yet we today. Not, no. So that would be a start. We haven't had over 50 yards of offense yet. Yeah. Our defense has given up a huge amount of yards. Yep. Our special teams have seen the most amount of yards on our team right now. So a lot of Loyola Ignatius fan uh, friendliness. You know, there's a lot of Loyola students that are friends with Ignatius students, and uh, even though it's a rivalry, it's still good to see. Yeah, a lot of good friends. A lot of people went to grade school with each other. Yeah. So that, that is good to see. So 30 seconds left and counting until the second half gets underway. We will receive the ball, like I said earlier. Ignatius is still warming up, and Loyola is uh, talking on the side. They're talking on the sideline. They're ready to go. So thanks again to all you who have stuck with us in this game. It's a uh, not the greatest game if you're a Wolfpack fan, a very good game if you're a Rambler fan. And we just want to see the best out of uh, our Wolfpack team. So we're just about ready to get started here. A lot of Blackhawks paraphernalia out there in the crowd. A lot. I think it's because of the uh, USA Day. Yeah. Red. Season of kicks off for the Hawks in 13 days. Very excited. Absolutely. Start off in Dallas and uh, hopefully make another run at the Cup. There's also a uh, game going on tonight. Against the Rangers at the, the United UC. Center. Only uh, about a 10, 15 minute drive from where we are right now. So the Wolfpack still talking it over on the sideline. So like I said, Dick Butkus is in the crowd tonight. And, uh, you know, maybe if it gets even uglier, we can throw some pads on uh, Dick, have him play oh, linebacker. That, that would be great. And that, would make, that would make ESPN news right there. Hopefully, if we're lucky, maybe after the game we could say a few words. That's very unlikely. It's not going to happen. Very unlikely. Not going to happen. But you never know. Anything can happen. <laughs> He's seen a, uh, a good Rambler team play some good football. As here's the kick. Very good kick. And it is Bradley. He's up the right side. Breaking tackles. And like I talked about his speed earlier, and the best return of the day from the special teams. Very, very fast. I think he's the fastest player on this football team. He is. He's one of the fastest kids at Ignatius. Yeah. Really can burn you with his speed. So the running clock, as I mentioned, well, this game will be very short here in the second half. And it is a handoff up the middle. And nothing much doing. So second and eight. Coming up here. 
as the Wolfpack look to get something going in the second half. Ryan Cool just stole the game for the Wolfpack. Yeah, I'm sure they'll put more in a little bit later. And another run play up the middle. It's McNally with another carry. And it'll be third and two. Gain of eight yards. Being third and one, actually. That was the biggest running play for Ignatius yeah, so nice, far tonight. Yeah, nice run there. That was a good way to start. They probably won't go to the air here with third and short. But we will see. We're for Ignatius here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, did they get it? We will see. I don't think so. I think it's fourth and inches. That's what it looks like from here. Let's go for it, why don't we? Fourth and inches here. You have nothing to lose, 48 to nothing. You might as well go for it. We went for it a lot against Walter Payton, the opening game at Toyota Park. Yeah, and we did. Uh, and we, we converted on most, yeah. of our, most of our tries. It looks good on fourth down. Let's see if we can do that here tonight. So fourth and inches, and we will go for it. And here's a snap, and it's a handoff. Do they have it? Hey, there first, we go. There's a first the down. That's what we needed. One step at a time. Hobbling off it's number 71. I believe that's John Tucci. Hopefully, just a little. Uh, a little, a little nick. Maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I, I saw him a little shaken up uh, before the end of the half, so hopefully nothing is uh, too bad. No. Hopefully he's okay. A big boy and a good, good lineman. First and ten. And it's a pitch to Mike pitch Weber. And he's run out of bounds. Looks like he uh, lost maybe about two, three yards on that play. But I, I, I like to see that. I like to see Ig Ignatius uh, working their way on the outside. Yeah, we continually running it up the middle. I haven't seen that play a whole lot. Loyola is ready for it and uh, loss on the on the play. Haven't gone to the air yet this drive. See if they do. The Ramblers have one interception. Should be two as it went right through the hands of a Rambler defensive back. And Coolidge sets up again, second and 14, actually. And they will pass out to the right side, and it's complete. Frank DeLeo off the right sideline, and he gets to about the 40, and we are in our territory. That looked like about a gain of or in 20, territory. 25 yards, would you say? Yeah. About, so that makes that our biggest offensive play of the night. Ran a little button hook. He you know, went out, turned right back, made a nice reception, and they are in Rambler territory for the first time tonight, I believe. I think so. Maybe second time. Maybe. Maybe. Our very own Matthew Berghoff waving his Wolfpack towel, trying to get everybody riled up. Don't know if it's working or not, but it he will like try his hardest. It looks like it's working. Look at the uh, Ignatius card right now. Uh -huh. going crazy. Yeah. Wow. And another run up the middle for a gain of one or two. So the best drive of the game continues for the Wolfpack. See if they can get some points out of it. Second and eight it looks like coming up. So we're on the 43 yard line. Maybe we'll go to the air again. That'd be nice to see. Get a little consistency going. Yeah. Doesn't hurt. McNally's lined up in the backfield. Here's a snap, and it is a pass. Out to the left side this time, and there's Danny Moore. Danny Moore. Great catch, went up and got that. There's a first down. So the passing has worked here in the second half as we're halfway through the third quarter. And 
we keep on rolling here. Yeah, I uh, I have to say I've, I haven't seen that before. A quarterback passing to another quarterback. Yeah, that was fun to see. Yeah, Coolidge to Moore. Moore's new role as a wide receiver looks like it could continue. Another pass we have. Oh, shuffle pass. And it is was that Weber? Uh, it looks like it's Weber. It's Sonnen. 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 Gain of about three yards maybe. Yeah, so second and seven coming up. Maybe second and six. Second and seven. So let's try and put some points up on the board. Nice passing play to DeLeo. Nice passing play to Moore. And second and seven here. Sonnen out to the right. In motion is Weber. And they hand it off to McNally, and he fights his way for three yards. Maybe four. That was no, a good run. Three. Puts us in a manageable uh, third down situation. Uh, but uh, like we talked about... Um, before the second half began, uh, the play clock is now at four minutes and 30 seconds uh, left in the third. Yeah. So this game is really uh, progressing Just quickly. rolling. Third and three. Big play here for the Wolfpack. Weber set in motion again. And it's Coolidge keeps it and he shovels it. There's Weber and he's close to that first down. He was hit hard. But he gets up, he's okay. Good to see. And it looks like it's fourth and about a yard. Let's go for it again, baby. Why not, it worked before. Yeah, be interesting to see what they do though. Coolidge runs back into the huddle after he receives the play call from the coach. And it's QB sneak. It'll be close. Looks like he got it. And they're signaling another first down, so the chains keep on moving. Oh, we are now at the 20, so we have entered the red zone. First time. Tonight. That time I know. That This I know is the first yes. time that we have reached the red zone. Let's see if we go to the air here. And that, that's big. I mean, it's the first time the Ignatius offense is really making an impact in this game so far. Longest drive we've had by far. We'll try to keep this thing going. Weber set in motion. And there's a fumble. Let's hope we got that one. They're signaling second down, so it will be Wolfpack ball. Yeah, it looked like Coolidge fell on top of it, so we'll remain with it. So second and 11 after the fumble recovery loss of one. And even if we get to fourth down, I believe they'll send Christie out to kick the field goal. This is well within his range. Although we, I don't think we've seen a field goal this year. Yeah, uh, I don't think so. Uh, I've seen him at practice and he has an incredible range. He could oh, yeah. easily make this kick from here right now if he really had to. And the run was from McNally. And no gain on the play. Whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, it's just it's points. It's very important to get points up on the board. It is point. points, and we have reached two minutes left in the third quarter as this third quarter has flown by. And we've had the ball the entire quarter, so we have. good to see. So the Ignatius offense is coming out to a third and 11 right now. So we'll see uh, what they do if they go for the first down now or if they look for yards for a possible field goal or uh, attempt at a conversion on the fourth down. So the little reverse play to DeLeo and he's going to pass the ball. It's caught. And it's Sonnen. So a little trickery there Great from play. the Wolfpack. And the reverse pass play by DeLeo is a touchdown. Great pass. I love that play call there. Who would have thought that the best pass of the night would come from a uh, wide receiver? From Frankie DeLeo, typically the defensive star, makes the play. And we've got our first touchdown of the game.
And Christie will line up for the extra point. It is up and it is good. So seven points for the Wolfpack. There we go, that's all we needed. Points up on the board. And the clock just keeps rolling. It's, it's a running clock. When a, when a team gets up 40, the clock just keeps rolling. Yeah. And over. Yeah. So time winding down, and I believe that play will end the, fir the third quarter, excuse me. Yes, it will. And we will head into the fourth. That's all we really wanted to see well, was a touchdown yeah, for the that, Wolfpack, and that wish was granted. It was very entertaining to watch. It oh, really, yeah. It really picked up this crowd here. And it was cool that it wasn't just a normal play. It was a reverse pass play. It was very cool. Very nice. So there's seven points. Rambler starting a little bit of a cheer. Their team. Their offense did not get a play in the third quarter. They did not, and that's because of that, that running clock. It stops here for the fourth quarter, but once that starts up, it will not stop until the end of the game. Just keep going. So now it's time to see what the uh, Wolfpack defense can do now. Great drive by by the offense, and now it's their turn to make a few plays, save, see if they can get the ball back, put more points up on the board. Yeah, it was a good mixture there by the Wolfpack offense. You know, it, some runs, some passes, and then the trick play at the end there. So Christie will kick it away. The only kickoff of the game for the Wolfpack was an on, a failed onside kick. So the second kickoff, I believe, should be a normal one at least. And it is, a short kick. yeah, little, little chip. And he's taken down at the 35. So Michael Christie goes with the little chip kick. And now let's see what the defense can do as the Rambler offense makes their way out of the field for the first time in the second half. First and ten. So DeLeo telling his team, let's let's make some plays here. Let's let's at least make the let's win the second half, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. It looks like uh, Loyola has a new quarterback in. Uh, it's still Richard Walsh, Wall. I believe. Yes, it, uh, I'm sorry, it is still Aiden Walsh in that quarterback. So there's the handoff, and he gets spun around there by Sponholtz. Taken down right at the yard of scrimmage. That was a very good stop by, by Sponholtz. I don't know what happened to my other roster here. Oh, well. So a gain of one. And it is second and nine. And it's another handoff. Nice gain there. He keeps the legs moving. And that was a powerful run. Yeah, he dragged at least three Wolfpack defenders with him. That was, a, that was an amazing run. Good and running. enough for the first down, too. Yeah, good running backs like you see in the NFL, like Marshawn Lynch, just will not give up on a play. He gets, you know, swallowed by a few tacklers, and he's not going down easily. Yeah, that, that's a big part of a uh, running back's job. Uh, you know, it's the yards after first contact is made. And he was hit right at the yard of scrimmage, and oh, yeah. he, he dragged his defenders with him for a first down. So a fresh first and ten there for the Ramblers after that nice gain. Walsh communicating with his offensive line. And here's the snap. Hand off again. And this time is stopped. Stop for no gain, looks like. That's number 39 for the Ramblers. Let's see who that is here. Kind of hard to see on these rosters as they're kind of faded out a little uh, bit. There's number uh, 73, Nick Gargano made the tackle, and it looked like he was a little shaken up on the play. He was slow to get up. So Don't want to see that. We'll see uh, if he's okay. He's a little slow coming to the line as well. 
This roster has multiple people under the same number. There's three 22s, two 39s, and I believe that 39 who ran the ball was Jack Loper. And Loper at it again. Dardano makes the tackle. Yeah. You know how you shake off an injury? You make a big hit. That's, that's how you do it. The old fix it with, uh, with some dirt approach. Throw some dirt on it. Yeah. Can't do that here, though, with the new turf. Yeah. You know, I hate walking out on the turf because every time I do, they little things just get stuck in my feet all day. Yeah. It's like rubber, it's like sand at the beach. Shoes, yeah. So third and seven for the Ramblers, and Walsh look to make something happen. And here's a snap. It's a pass, and it's complete. Oh, that was a big hit there by Weber. You know, Sponholtz or uh, originally was dragging him down, and Weber came in and. Hit him hard, but everybody's okay. The pass is complete to number 87. And, of course, there's no 87 on this roster. That's good to see. Whoever got this roster did not. There is my roster down there. My better one. My actual one. So there's number 87, Eric Eshoo. Six foot three, 220 pounds. That's a big, big receiver for you. Like to have that as a quarterback. So there's the run, and run. he's out and gone. Touchdown, Loyola. There's Loper. Ignatius so defense was doing a, a pretty good job at holding Loyola until that yeah. that huge run. So Loper, number 39. Makes a 39-yard run, okay. and it's a touchdown, yeah. Coming up on seven minutes left. And the extra points about to come here. And it's a little high. Another nice play there by the... Almost blocked, but yeah. it was good. So the placeholders had to deal with a low snap and a high snap, and he's handled both. And it is four, 55 to 7. Most points given up by the Wolfpack this year. So the Wolfpack the Ramblers will kick it away. And it'll be a new set of we got the Leo back, we got Bradley back, and we got Dan McMahon, the sophomore out of St. Mary's and Riverside back to receive. The clock continues to run, so we are now at 5.45 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, let's see if Ignatius can get another touchdown on the board. So DeLeo and McMahon are from out, like me, in the western suburbs. DeLeo from Elmhurst and McMahon from Riverside. As here's the kick, it will go to Nick Bradley running in on it. He'll take it, and he will try and find some room off the right sideline, but nothing really doing as he's taken down at the 25. Here comes the Wolfpack offense. Let's see what they can do. They don't have a whole lot of time to work with at the running clock, but uh, it took them a full quarter to score last time. And Ryan Coolidge is still in the game, so it looks like we will finish the game with him. It's good to get some practice at this point. You know, at, at this point in the game, 55-7, to 7, it's just a scrimmage. Just work on things you feel. Yeah. Uh, you, you need to work on going into the next week. Yeah, we can still win this half as Coolidge keeps it himself. Good decision as he gets a first down on the yeah. play. Gain of about 11. You know, he had the option to pitch it. And that uh, that offense provides you with several different options. He made the right one there, kept it himself, and there's a first down. So big play to start off their drive. And Coolidge will go at it again. Go, go, go. 
And it'll be a passing play. He's pressured big time. And he's saying, oh, what a catch. What a catch there. He was getting pressured. Getting pressured. That's a sign of a good quarterback. You get pressured, you get the throw off. and That's David Moore on the reception. Sophomore out of FXW. No relation to uh, no. Danny Moore. No. Weber in motion. It's a handoff to McNally. He's got some room. His biggest run of the night. And second. They move the chains again. Another first down. So the offense moving quickly. And so, they need to with the yeah. clock continuing to run down. So Coolidge keeping it himself. A pass play to David Moore and McNally. All plays that lead to first downs. Coolidge has been a lot smarter this half. He's been making a lot of very smart decisions. Yeah. He's got no pressure. They're down a, they're down a lot. And oh, hauled in there. What an catch was made. unbelievable DeLeo catch by DeLeo. Jumped and went back to get it. A back shoulder, one-handed grab by DeLeo. And that, that was unbelievable. Yeah, amazing catch. The pass was a little underthrown, but he was able to adjust and take it in. Well, that shows the versatility of Frank DeLeo. He's an all-conference defensive player, and he comes out here in offense and makes great plays. He, he has a passing touchdown tonight. Yep. He, he, he's a star player, and he, he proves it on the field. What an That's athlete. can say. And here's the handoff to McNally, and another nice game. 2.30 left in the game. I remember playing Frank back in grade school in basketball at St. John of the Cross would play a visitation, and he was one of the bigger boys in grade school. He was a bit of an intimidating presence down on the post. Always fun games against Frank. Yeah, he's an athlete. Weber in motion, and Coolidge will keep it himself. And... He has the first down, so the offense keeps rolling. We are coming on under two minutes left in the game, so we'll see if uh, Ignatius can hurry up and put the ball in the end zone one more time. Well, we're at the 15, so even if we kick a field goal, we have won this half, and that's good to see. Here's a snap, it's a passing play over the middle, caught! And he is close. He's at about the five yard line. Mike Weber with the catch. That was a very good play by Ignatius. Oh, I'd yeah. like to see right now a, uh, a play action pass. Maybe some more trickery, do, do a little flea flicker, you know? Maybe the old fumble ruski. Ball's on the six yard line. I think that play was first started by Nebraska. I could be wrong, though. Coolidge keeps it. with the keeper, and he is tackled. Under a minute left in the game now. That was a bad voice crack by being right there. You know, I thought I was over that stuff, but uh, it happens every once, once in a while. And the gain of nothing, so it's third and six. 40 seconds left, and the clock keeps ticking. And it's a passing play over the middle, incomplete. But the running clock keeps going, so we gotta get either the field goal unit on or the offense to keep rolling. See what they do here. They're gonna keep the offense on. I don't think they have enough time to bring the field goal unit on. There's 20 seconds left. One more play here in this game. Let's see what they're gonna do. Fourth and one. And it is a handoff. To DeLeo, shakes off a tackler! Get in there. Nice He's in there! Down. <laughs> the clock runs out, DeLeo scores. 55 to 13 is your final here. Great way to end the, yeah. end the game with what they were given with the situation. So we're, a good note. so we're signing off here on High School Cube. Thanks to all you viewers. Thanks to my play-by-play, -play, Will Heron. We've got Zach and Alistair on the cameras. Thanks, boys. Sean Grant back in the production truck. And we will see you for our next broadcast. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and we will see you next time.